Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. I'm at the beautiful club at Mediterra in Naples, Florida. Today's subject, the key right wrist move for hitting solid shots. I'll show you how it works, give you some really simple imagery and some drills that I know will help you make progress. Very briefly, if you're new to the channel, maybe you've watched these videos before, but you've never subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. It helps us build momentum. Also hit the little bell there. You'll be notified every time a new video is coming your way. So what about this right wrist, this right hand through the golf shot? First thing to always ask is, what are we trying to accomplish? Well, two things that come to mind, we're trying to apply pressure to the golf ball, and secondly, we're trying to tilt the face forward against the ball. Now, if you've struggled with this in your golf life, and most people do, frankly, their impacts don't quite look right, a lot of scoop in there, you will kick yourself when you see how easy it is as we get into it in the video, at least in theory. Let's have a quick look at the pros, then we'll circle back here and see if we can help you out. So Rory McIlroy on the left there hitting a wedge of some sort, looks like Sergio Garcia hitting a relatively short iron, but let's have a look at, the, at these two greats. So here he comes, let's really focus on that right wrist and the bend of it there, just as a beautiful job there as he goes into the ball. Now listen, it releases shortly after he hits it, it's not like it's ad infinitum bent, but what we see is again, he's able to get to impact and he's able to create an angle that applies pressure to the ball really effectively. Now let's look at Sergio. And again, same sort of angle. That will apply pressure to the ball really effectively and it will also tilt the club face against the ball and allow him to, really helps him hit the ball before he hits the ground. So simply take your club, put it against something firm, chair leg, bucket of balls, and apply some pressure. You will notice you will feel a bend in this wrist and it will give you leverage. You try it with a flat wrist, you won't get much help. Grip-wise, if we say this is the top of the shaft, this is the side of the shaft, you want most of your hand up against the side of the shaft, you can apply pressure better there, much more so than when it's way on top or underneath. So somewhat on the side, pretty easy to apply pressure. So as you can see, this isn't rocket science, we're just applying pressure to something. Let's have a very quick close-up look at this tilting of the face, then we'll get out and start the drills. So when hitting an iron, the club is designed to tilt the sweet spot against the ball. You'll compress it better, the sweet spot's several grooves up, it's not at the very bottom of the club. Tilt it against the ball, you'll compress it better, you'll hit it further with less effective loft, a bent right wrist is required. Okay, let me show you how easy this is, at least in theory. You probably don't have a paintbrush handy. If you do, if you're at home, grab one. You don't really need it, it's a mental picture. If you could, let's say there was a bench in front of you just below belt buckle high, could you paint a nice long stripe of paint on there with that brush? Of course you could, you wouldn't need a lesson in how to do it. Nobody would just flick the paint up in the air all day long. It's as easy as that, at least in terms of movement. Giving golf lessons all the time, people are so self-defeating. Oh, I can't lag the club I've tried for years, or whatever it is, I come across the target line. This just isn't that difficult. So what are the barriers to doing it? Well, I think a lot of times people haven't clearly conceived what the, uh, what the goal, what they're trying to do is. They're just so busy trying to hit that golf ball, their mind's full of angst, they're going at full speed. They just don't have any feel for what they're doing. But if they broke it down, if they went slowly, that's what we're going to do as we move forward here for just a little bit. They could do it as easily as they could paint the paintbrush. There's a little pitfall with that paintbrush I'll show you in just a minute, but let's get into drills. There's a nice paintbrush type look in the right wrist, ball shot off really low, that was an 8 iron. Here's the first thing I would recommend you do, get an 8 or a 9 iron, something like that. Make some little swings without the ball first, until you can get a little bit past this left hip, loft of the club tilted down and forward, hand, wrist bent basically, hand a little bit higher than the club head. Now, listen, I give golf lessons all day long, I'm a golf teacher. It is incredible how often I'll tell someone to do something like that, let's say, and say, let's pay attention to this little mini finish, let's chip one, whatever, 30 yards. They get over the ball, next thing you know, club's up here, 
Even more interesting than that, they don't even notice that. They're just their minds so beguiled by the ball, what happened, what they forget completely what they were trying to do and lose concentration on their finish. If you cannot keep your attention in the area you want to keep it for a few seconds, if you want to stay in scoop prison your whole life, that's the way to do it. People get stuck because they cannot feel what happens. They cannot put their attention there. So make some little swings. Don't be one of those people that gets stuck. Little swing. This kind of a look right here. And we're going to give you a few little pitfalls here, or tips, I think, that'll help you here from this angle in just a minute. I want to show you one more thing about the paintbrush. Just quickly, I want to say, though, I have a brand new Scratch Golf Academy app. Like these YouTube videos, it's free to use. It's got some great stuff on there. Tempo trainers, short game trainers, green reading stuff, video content. Grab that at the App Store. I'd love to help you with your golf game that way. Okay, one last comment regards the brush. Again, pretty easy to use the brush this way. Two little thoughts regards that though. Number one, if you had to paint a fairly long stripe down that bench, you'd have to engage your body a little bit. So you've got to move a little bit as you do that. Just use your right hand, see what that would feel like. Don't get it too technical. Don't try to piecemeal it out. Secondly, when you paint the bench with the brush, you don't jam the handle into the bench. The handle's going level to slightly up. It's the bristles that are leaning, so make sure. You, know, you talk about pros hitting down on the ball. They only hit fractionally down, and they're not actually in total hitting down. It's only the fact the club's leaning gives them any downward hit. Get in the habit, as you work on this, of a very level feel here with the brush or the club as you hit these shots. All right, let's finish up with some thoughts here I think will help you from this angle. Well, there's a full one as we dial back to some of these small ones. I'm going to give you one mental tip I think will be helpful to you and one physical tip, so to speak. And again, very, very important. The physical one, there can be overriders to this. The worst of all, the most obvious to me, I think, is, is the grip. If the grip, and there's no one right grip, but if your grip is such that you have a hard time squaring the face up, you leave the face open and peel balls to the right a lot, you will get more or less an override from your body trying to whip the club head closed, which works against the paintbrush look, because you need it, because you've got to get the ball online. So check the grip. This isn't a video about grip, but check it such that you can knock loft off it, turn the face square, and still keep that right wrist cocked. The mental key. Hey, listen, if you were painting, using the paintbrush, painting the bench, with each stroke, would you need to think afresh? Now, don't forget, bend your wrist. You wouldn't need to think like that. Or you just have a mental picture of it, and you do it. So if you do it on a small enough scale, don't put your attention on what to do. You already know what to do. You should have rehearsed it. Just notice what's happening. So I'm going to make a little swing. I'm not paying it. I'm not thinking about what to do, but I am very well aware of what I feel through the ball. That felt about right. Do it on a scale you can do it on then build up speed. Hope this helps.